what I normally do with my ultrasound is, I mean, when we started doing this 20, 30 years ago, there was no ultrasound to guide us, <laughs> okay? None. So all of these procedures were done blindly. When I started doing, actually, interventional pain many moons ago, 50% of all interventional pain specialists in the state of Texas, 50%, we're doing cervical injections blindly. Just makes me nervous just to think about it. But we would do these injections with what it was called the hanging drop technique, where you would put a drop of water in the hub and as you enter through skin, subcutaneous tissue, and supraspinatus ligament, interspinatus ligament, ligamentum flavum, and finally we go into the epidural space because the epidural space is a virtual space, it would suck up that drop of water. And that was the way that we would do it many, many moons ago. Okay, so because we know this, what we normally do is I come in with my needle and I perform my procedure. I've been doing this for many, many moons. Then what I do is I take my ultrasound probe and I take my ultrasound probe and I put it in plane. In plane means that if my needle comes like this, the ultrasound probe is like this. This is in plane. Out of plane, oh, let me show you right over here. So if my needle comes in here, and my ultrasound probe is right here, this is called in-plane. Now, if my needle comes over here, but my ultrasound probe is over here, this would be out of plane. When it's out of plane, all you see is a dot. That's all you see, just a dot. When it's in plane, you will actually see the needle penetrating tissue, okay? So, if I have my knee here, and if I'm coming right here with a suprapatellar approach, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have my transducer, the probe, is going to be in plane. In order for me to visualize as the needle is coming into that space, the intraarticular space. So, very simple. Now remember, we're not diagnosing pathology. And this is important to remember. We're not diagnosing pathology. We have a clinical diagnosis already made. Whatever your clinical diagnosis, let's say we're talking about knees, let's say osteoarthritis of the knee. Okay, so that's my clinical diagnosis. I'm utilizing the ultrasound only for guidance. Okay, I'm not utilizing my ultrasound for diagnostic purpose, that's not, the, that's not what this course is all about because you would need to be a radiologist for that if you want to start diagnosing. So I have a clinical diagnosis. My clinical diagnosis would be, if we're talking in the knee, osteoarthritis. I come with my needle the way that I would normally always do, and now I would put my probe in plane with that needle in order for me to confirm placement. So this is what is called a ultrasound guided procedure. I'm making sure that my end point is correct. Where the needle should be, the end point is correct. Six approaches to the knee. Tell me an approach. A lateral suprapatellar. So lateral suprapatellar. So lateral suprapatellar approach. Anterolateral. Anterolateral. Anteromedial. Anteromedial. Tell me one. 
mid patellar. So, so this is the way that we know all six approaches. There's times that you may use a anterolateral approach and as you come, you start hitting bone. So when that happens, the best way to do is to bring your needle, your needle probably is to cephalot, and you're gonna need to bring your needle, you pull out your needle without pulling it out completely, you just retract your needle, and you reposition your needle more caudal. And this should actually be able. Now when I'm saying more caudal, we're not talking about half a centimeter. We're talking about a few millimeters. Few millimeters. All of these techniques are a few millimeters will make a big difference. Okay?